Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, the 11th of April. Breakfast with the Master. A lot of people are sleeping in this morning. Um, probably got about 10 emails. Hmm? Hi, Manuel. How are you? You know what? You guys never need to know. Manuel, if you ask me if I received an email a week ago, I have the faintest idea. I have, hard, I have a hard time remembering what I've received this morning already. I get 5,000 mails a day. If you want to know us about something specific um give me a specific and I'll, I'll either type to you privately or go ahead and answer you um bj liked wednesday night that uh, evening with the master used it twice already i'm glad to hear that bj um you guys just continue to shine uh let's see Everybody having a good week? Bad week? How's it going? Oh, oh Thomas liked uh, IB? Good. Um, great week. Good. Bad week. Hmm. Okay. Well, not good. All right. You like the quote by Amos? Okay. Um... Uh, I'll email me again this morning. I'll try and do it right after the session. You're, you're getting lost in the mail. The flurry of mail is just bad. Ah, Gina says, just having trouble going live, which is frustrating because I'm seeing the moves. Slow down. Gina, I don't know if you were here when we talked about this. It's Sean's baseball coach, I love this quote, when the, when the market speeds up, when the game speeds up, you have to slow down. Your intuition tells you, your instincts, I should say, not your intuition, tell you, ooh, it's going faster. I got to go faster. Let me go get it. Slow down. Let the market come to you. It's hard to master that. But once you do, as long as you're seeing them, Gina, it's okay. Just slow down and relax, and then all of a sudden you'll hit one. Okay? Don't feel any nervousness about, oh my God, I missed one. In fact, we're going to show that today. Good morning, you should trademark Happy Dance. <laughs> so many profound implications in it. Yesterday's IB. Yeah, absolutely. Matt Cube said, that's the biggest thing I've had to res wrestle, Gina. you got to slow down. You'll see them over and over and over. And if you get frustrated because you missed it, when the opportunity does come, You'll be so busy in frustration. Igshan, I missed a few this week. So, I'm in that club. I'm, I'm, a, I'm starting off a little slow. Uh, you know, I was in the penalty box until late last week, and I, I was, I'm just starting off a little slow, that's all. Ah, Matt, it's a different Matt. I'm going to call you Matt C. You want to be Matt C.? I also missed several good trades this week. Revenge trading. Oh, no. No. All right, so if you miss one and you feel like, God darn it, I'm going to get in. Those are generally, if you chase it, revenge trading, you're not going to like it, are you, Matthew? Matthew C. David Lice is good week for flat week for me. Yeah, well, flat's not that bad. Hi, Kareem, how are you? Some weeks are flat, okay? <clears throat> Remember, you're in the tuition stage. Matthew says, I had a trade go against me, but I thought the logic was sound. Well, as good as you get, you're probably not going to get much better than a third losers. That means some of those trades are just going to be losers. That's okay. I would Matt, Matt Cubed, I would not spend a lot of time if you thought the logic was sound, I wouldn't spend a lot of time going over it. I wouldn't spend a lot any time at all feeling bad about it. I would just try and keep a clear mind, watch the market, wait for opportunities. Slow down, wait for opportunities. John, John Lee says, Good week in a sense, my losses were immediate within one to one, one to two bars. John, that's exactly what my losses look like. 
I saw what I thought was a fulcrum in four hour gen, uh, Japanese gen last week. I didn't get in on the trade, but was looking on it and interested to see how it went. I was glad I saw it. There you go. If you can see it, you'll start to be able to use it. All right. Kai says he, because of what he's learned here, he's managing, he's hedging some portfolio positions this week. Yeah, and it did a pretty good job for you on the DAX, right? Good. So things are working out for people. Um, so Gina, a couple other people that are they're missing some trades. Again, we're going to go back on one. First, I'm going to tell you what this crazy Jordan is doing. BJ, maybe you can figure this out. I have these little sailing things that I have to use in my nebulizer. They look like uh, they're about... So they look like a finger and they're clear and inside they just have saline okay and he's figured out I have to use two different kinds one's in a red clear thing and the other one's just like soft plastic and the other's in white yeah and he just but here's what he does he does love them but here's what he does BJ he takes one puts it on the desk takes it out of the box puts it on the desk bats it around three or four times puts it in his mouth meows at me then trots off the desk, jumps off the desk. He's got a little box over in the corner where he sleeps. Jump, jumps into his box. He's got like like 14 or 15 of them in there now. And then he goes to sleep. Now come back and get another one and go back to sleep. It's like, what the heck? I think he's teething. He's trying to get your attention? No, I don't think so. I He can just come over here and, and rub me. I'll get attention. I think he's teething. Anyway, he's having a good old time. <clears throat> okay, so... Now that he's safely in his box, and it looks like he's he's got his one little, he's playing with it up in the air. I, I think we can go on. Kleptomaniac cat. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's because he's teething. I've, I've uh, sent something to breathing. You know, I've bred Siamese for 17 years, and these cats are so different because they're so close to the wild. They are completely different. So, <clears throat> anyway. I traded 240. And often wonder if I should go to a smaller time frame, but cannot at the moment when the others are missing trades. What time frames are they trading? Sean, they're trading everything from 20s, 60s. It's not so much that. You know, the thing about 240s is, <clears throat> do you mind if I have to go away? No, no, no. You can leave and go back. It doesn't matter, guys. And you don't even have to apologize. Don't worry. If you pop in and pop out, it's fine. Don't even think about it. So, Ikshan... Tell me how you're missing the trades. Are they happening in... Yeah, it's a bar you're not watching? I mean, you're not just capable of not being there? Or you don't see the setup in the 240? Well, okay, if you're sleeping, there's nothing you can do about it. I don't. You could be on a 20-minute or a 60-minute, you're not going to see the setup, right? Everybody's got to sleep. Even I have to sleep. Now, I do have a bit of a luxury. I can leave specific orders with humans that can make real decisions for me that I trust. But sometimes the market just goes straight up or down. Okay, we're going to look at that today, Ikshan. How about that? We're going to look at being frustrated. Or how about this? We're going to look at a market that moves. Okay, and you can choose to do one or two things when you think you got the market. You think you got it nailed. Okay, everybody follow me? You're following it, you follow it, you follow it. I think I got this, remember? Everybody got that? And then, it's like, ah, damn it. There it goes. Right, Gina? I see it. I put my hands out to grab it and it's missed. Whoosh, gone. Right? Happens often. If you spend any time at all worrying about that, at least now I know it's gone. Good, Gina. So she, don't cha don't chase it, right? This week was like that. Ixan will watch this. It's not every time that you get a second opportunity, but I'll guarantee you this. If you spend any time, or it washes you and it's gone. Yeah, BJ. Uh, well, if it washes you, you're better off not trading it, I think. If it comes to get you, I, I just like to say, okay, you know what? You, that's all the money you can have today. Goodbye. And if it goes, it goes. That's fine. You'll find another trade. But 
that you know if you spend any time doing anything other than clearing your mind slowing down and deciding whether or not the opportunity may still be there or whether or not you just want to move on to another chart or maybe even just walk away for a while but if you if you try and make the trade happen I've talked about this so many times if you try and twist what you're drawing or draw some new lines you know you know what I'm saying it 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 often doesn't play well it's better off to get a get a straight mind you can't force it it's gonna be there or it's not gonna be there and if you miss it it's okay starting using a smaller median line within the bigger median line yeah sure of course of course that's okay absolutely now especially if you're using big fat median lines when you're gonna see that today as well like Sean but then you have to decide which you'll see often when you draw the smaller ones or when you refresh what you think you're refreshing the frequency you'll have to decide it at some point one may be working and another one may it may pass off to the other one you have to go hmm did anybody else lose sound there okay just just you Bob sorry okay good all right let's let's uh let's go to work ah good Bob go away price fluctuates let's keep that in our mind the Amos quotes are nice aren't they I've got a I've got a notebook I'll I'll keep digging some more out all right so <clears throat> it really doesn't matter what market we're in okay this is natural gas 377 oh by the way this was funny big news story today you know I get these because you're a hedge fund manager they send you quote unquote big news stories these firm it's a it's a group in London risk.net Wow natural gas volatility is way up who boy that's a big news story now <laughs> they're only about a month and a half late oh god Thank, good thing I don't pay for that, huh? Jeez. I, if I was that guy, I'd be embarrassed to, to write that. Talk about filler. Hey, Petra, how are you? That's right, we're just starting. Maybe they'll figure out why it went down. I doubt it. They'll probably say, they probably go, well, they were actually talking about, you know, that this year's winter made everybody remember that, you know, natural gas has a lot of upside that's what that was the story oh okay it's global warming sure it is <laughs> oh god all right here we go <coughs> so we've got natural volatility here it just come down and fill the mountain and I know somebody yesterday on Thursday asked about how can you tell if it's a mountain I mean it's just there comes down fills the mountain holds comes down you know I probably should do, should have done this as well I don't think we need a hundred but we need that there we go let's just do that and you can see what does it do it comes to the valley and the valley holds so you got a standoff here we're going right but it's normal volatility we've got it marked out we've pretty much got it covered at this point right so now we have marked structure what phase would you say the markets in right now box in a range yeah very good so come down don't quite test the mountain now we do test the mountain first touch through second touch and gone okay ranges Let's talk a little bit about odds today let's write that in there 
What are the odds in a range? Period. Andrews used to get this wrong, and so and Scotty, you can remember this. I used to get this wrong. Andrews thought he had an edge on range for a couple of years, and then he went, "You know what? I got this wrong. Uh, this doesn't work." I'm not even going to talk about the technique. And Scotty, you remember when I used to do modified shifts trying to get an edge inside a range? Remember that? Yeah. And in the end, uh, sloped ranges are a little bit different, Gina. But these are dead. But slope ranges, the breakout is still 50-50. But you have a little bit of a help because you do have the, the frequency, right? Here, we don't have any frequency. But I used to try modified shifts, and I thought I was giving myself some help, and then we kept running the statistics. It's a little a little bit like fulcrum. It was like a thing uh, that we thought was helping, but I think the fulcrum is actually working out, but the modified shifts in the, tra in the slopes ranges didn't work. Do you have a third, higher percent of the third drives in a range? Uh, no, not till it breaks out. Uh, what's the, well, okay, let me ask you this. If I've got three drives to the top, three drives to the bottom, what's the percentages that we're going to break out to the top? What's the percentage we're going to break out to the bottom? Fifty-fifty. Yeah. And most of the time, Matt, if you look carefully, you'll have three drives to the top, three drives to the bottom. And when one of them gives... You know, it's just just the way it is, okay? So <clears throat> don't try and, I, and I'm guilty of this. Scotty can remember me doing this live and teaching it. I'm guilty of it as anybody else, which is why I've, made, I've gone out of my way to say, for example, on fulcrums, still studying them, guys. I, I think they're there. I think they help. They, I think I can feel price shift, but maybe it's an illusion. I don't have enough statistics yet. So let's keep looking at them. I'll be, you know, I'm more than willing to say, oh, that was an illusion. I can name a few. Scotty, you've been around long enough that you watch me put fib stuff on a chart. And, yeah, and I finally drank the kerosene and got rid of that <clears throat> by just anti-fib trading. I started the anti-fib trading and I talked to Joe Napoli, the fib guy, and he makes most of his money trading against the fib orders. And I went, well, pff, okay. Could the percentage shift if you see some signature bar on one side, one side of the box may be tougher than the other? Uh, no. I don't think so. If you clearly, do, I mean, if you only have one touch on the bottom, but if you, these were about, these are, look, these are about equal. And there's plenty of people. Scott, he does teach to trade the fib levels, but I'm telling you, he and I had a day where we traded together. A lot, of, a lot of us uh, that are from the old school have days where we'll just put our screens together and trade just to see what's going on. And he was, he's breaking the fibs. <laughs> I was like, okay, I, I would do that. I was doing that, and I thought I was, you know, doing something new. And he started laughing. He said, No, I always do that. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm no, I I like his books. In fact, I have a tape that I still play in the car. Um, on on mark not, not on market structure on uh, risk, that I really like. I've probably been through six, and I, I'm usually cheap, but I'm not cheap on this. Um, I could turn it turn it into a CD, but it's a friend of mine. So when the tapes break, I just buy I buy a new set. But it's just, it's from 1987. It's a I was actually at that. I was I was speaking at that seminar, but um, I just I just like it. It just, just reminds me about risk. It was it was about during the 1970 crash, 1987 crash. What did what was Joe doing? How did he handle it? It was just interesting. Anyway, so you know if you've got now here we've got two touches on top, and we've got you know we've got two stacked up there. So maybe you feel you have an edge. Okay, 
you'd have to do the statistics on this Weege. I, I don't I don't know <clears throat> I don't because we've got two touches down here I don't I don't see anything and I will tell you right now that there's plenty of people for example yeah I don't think it can be generalized uh, Buka Mr. Bukowski said his name do I have that right I just get it right the guy that wrote the book on wrote a book I should say not the book on uh, mark yeah market structure market structures yeah Thomas anyway um, he says that you know if you're in an uptrend and then you range I don't remember what the what the percentage is but that you have a percentage a higher percentage you're gonna break out to the upside well how'd that work for you I see it as noise myself but that's just me I mean maybe he knows something I I don't I I trade for a living. I, I think he writes books, but just it's just me. I could be wrong. <clears throat> so price comes down, breaks the range. And then, remember natural gas, at least before the end of the winter, we, we haven't seen that much weird. Look at the natural sized bars, and then all of a sudden, it's wacky. And this is our tick, maker, tick marker when it goes chaotic. Remember that? Yen bars, I like that. Increase in volatility, and they're also they're kind of chaotic. It's you know, whoop, 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 whoop. it's not really it hasn't really gone anywhere. It just kind of gets wider and crazier. And so, when we leave a second, we come down and leave a low, pop up, retest this area, then leave a higher low. I'm just going to draw in always at the line of maximum excursion. Right, this is 3D. This is 2D. Does everybody understand that now? Is there anybody that is having trouble with that? I probably showed more at IB that I actually wanted or expected to, but you know what happens is you start to write something that goes where it goes. <clears throat> Can I show what, Al? I'm sorry. If it has a slope, it's three-dimensional. If it's horizontal, okay. So if it has a slope, it's 3D. Okay. If it doesn't have a slope, it's one dimensional. Um, the other help I can give you is hang on one second. So we're on a tangent and we're moving. And this is impact point coming from both directions. We stack them up and we got amplitudehedron, which give us which gives us three dimensional, right? Sine wave, slanted sine wave, action reaction, center line. Now here you are. They've got Z and Y. We would generally call it X and Y, but that's okay. And you can see the box that we're going to generate in a minute, and it's in three dimensions. And here's the third dimension. So here we go. Here's our advanced multi-pivot line in 2D. See it? Y? Everybody see that? And here it is in 3D on the same plane. See it? If you put this so that this, that this bar was horizontal facing right at you, you'd see this one going out into space, and you see this one actually going down. Okay? Does everybody get it now? Any questions? It's simple, but it's really po po powerful. And again, it's not one of those things I ever see anybody else show, so it's even better for us. I hope it doesn't go anywhere else. Is the red box forward or back of the Z? Um, it's um, it's in the middle. The floor is contains X, Y, and Z. Why do you wait so long to show this? <laughs> it helped you, didn't it, BJ? Um, 
I need, you know, when I bring something out, I need to know that there's going to be at least four or five people that are going to get it. Two winning trades yesterday from that, great. That's, that's wonderful. Keith says the evening session was very helpful. Yeah, the evening with the Masters is going very well. Are the 3D price points being projected onto a TD, 2D axis? Uh, yeah, Paul, let me, uh, okay, I'll go ahead and do it again. One second. All right, so, uh, where'd it go? There it is. All right, so, at the moment, we're in 3D because you can see the slope, right? Does everybody see that? If you rotated this so that everything was horizontal, of course, we'd be actually in 2D. But this line would no longer, what would this line, what would happen to this line that sloped if we ro rotated it so that everything was horizontal? Can you tell me? It'd be a point in space, that's right. So it wouldn't be of interest, right? Actually, it would disappear. Where would it be a point in space? Right at the Z, Y. Okay? That wouldn't help us. And you wouldn't see it. It has, in, in point of fact, it has no mass. So it would, you know, wouldn't even show up. But it would be there. There are many other points here, by the way. Many other dimensions. We just don't see them because we're looking at 3D at the moment. I'll see if I can dig out a 4D. I... I know I have a, at least a 4 or 5D sitting here somewhere if you if you really going to get crazy but be, I don't really think it has much of a trading application but we'll look at it maybe we can come up with one what happens if there are any, any rotation around one or more of the axes well we just did rotate it so that we can see this right and what will happen is you'll see um, Matt keep this in mind Matt, Matthew C as we go through what we're going to go through today, you'll see one median line is in control, and then the other median line will take control. That's actually rotation in three dimensions. We're going to go from we're going to go from one. I'm sorry, I'm doing this with my hands. We're going to go from one slope, and we're going to rotate, and the slope is going to change simply because we rotated. Does that make any sense? I'll have to turn this around so it's pointed that way, but okay. So, do you mean passing off from one line to the other is 3D? I do mean that, Gina. If it's a slope line, 4D cube. There we go. Uh, I don't know if I, I don't know if I can get to that. Would you email email me that for for some reason in in Go to Meeting? I could just click on it and Go to Webinar. It won't let you do it, you king. Um, no, no uh, but okay anyway yeah we're not i'm not gonna we'll do the 4d another time i just want to make sure it's applicable as they say don't worry about it it's right now l l well you can get your head around this wait stop stop are you listening to me now clear your head We've now rotated, so we're kind of looking down, right? And here's the X, here's Y, and here's Z. Do you see that? Okay. Where we're trying to trade is actually out here on a sloped... This is a quarter of a cube, or a quarter of a... A quarter of a circle. I, what looks like a circle, anybody? A quarter of an orange. A sphere, a quarter of a sphere. Yeah, I was thinking of something like that you could hold in your hand, though. Like if you have a small globe. If you have a ball you play with. A baseball. A quarter of a baseball. How about that? All right. So we, we've cut it into a quarter. We've quartered it. What's the difference between 3D and 4D? They look the same except 3D. No, wait till I can show it, Shane. Let's, let's get 3D first. Okay, so Al, we're actually looking at... If I rotated this a little bit, this would be, this y-axis would be, of course, straight like we normally have it, right? Let me, uh, I don't think I can do this. Um, okay, if you can imagine that. And this r is sloped, and we're rotating. And then once we rotate, this is a, is a quarter 
of a sphere or a quarter of a baseball. Ah. Uh, dang it. And what we're doing is we're looking at price as it interacts on this outside. And that's why we have one that's horizontal and ones that slope one that is sloped. Okay? And this line that looks like it's kind of spherical will actually just get larger and larger and larger and larger or it'll rotate and if it rotates then your median line which is this the slope of R your median line may shift from one to the other now let, 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 let me give me the opportunity to show you on a median line you might get it easier if not we'll come back to it Al okay Look, if you do, let me just say this again. If you don't get it, it's okay. It might pop into your head later, but it, you don't need this to trade. It's just an interesting explanation, okay? However, if you get it, you can ask BJ. They're finding it very interesting. And you could still have made this trade, for example, and I, I, don't, I don't even remember... I should go back and grab this trade, but <clears throat> you can, yeah, it's a great tool. You can still make this trade in this particular instance. If you can see the three dimensions, the floor is in three dimensions. In two dimensions, the floor doesn't exist. But if you're trading in three dimensions, you can see the floor, and you know price is likely to head up. Take a look and see if you can see the floor. Take a minute and study it. Do you put those cubes in your chart while you're trading? Yeah, sometimes, Gina, but not all the time. I let me see if uh, you guys hear me, right? It's weird. I see some. I guess some people. It's not me, but some other people are popping in out. It's probably your internet when you come. Whenever you come back, Shane. It's like Bob. It's like it just pops. It's your connection to go to meeting. Well, hopefully it's not mine. All right, so. Let's get rid of this. Is anybody else losing sound? Okay. So, this, this is our chaos ticker. All of a sudden things go crazy. We leave a higher low. So we've got our two-dimensional bottom. And now... We rotate a little bit as we come up and make a higher low. We've rotated a little bit along that spherical line. So we put out our three-dimensional bottom. Okay? It's a marker. And both are working good so far. no idea what that is looks like it's a I won't even bother to fix it but multiple tops and we come down now we're testing our maximum excursion line and it holds the first time closes with nice separation you could trade you can trade off of these guys if you want right back up to test that line that was a lot of money that was 10 cents thousand bucks in natural gas the easy way and you had a nice little test retest there okay and busted for, through even further and took out the highs now so we took out the lows now we've taken out the highs so Gina I see these but is not enough there for me to grab it. Do you understand what I mean?
So, yeah, I it, just not enough. Oh, it's not. I just it's not 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 about a cube. I mean, I see a trade possibility, and as I see it, it's just it's just not enough for me. Not enough of the pieces, right? But afterwards, I go, damn, nice trade, right? How many times do you do that? Would you have an order at the LME after the first touch? Uh, let's take a look. Let's see if I should have. Five, two, seven, eight. Uh, yeah, I probably should have. I didn't. Um, I thought about it when it touched here. My my rec my rule is three to five, and this was four ticks. I probably should have, but I did not. Would you tend to avoid entries when volatility is picking up? Yeah, I mean I'm a little I'm a little spooked because we're in that goofy period. So that's a good question, John. Um, in any case, I saw this and it was like smoke to me. You know, you're trying to grab smoke. It's beautiful frequency, and you know, afterwards when this bar prints. I'm just like you guys. Damn, wish I'd put that order in, right? That would mean you would not wait to see the retest reversal bar. That's right, Keith. I, I, I didn't put it in, right? I just went, eh, never mind. Oh, shoot. You know, it was a brief pause in the action. Would have liked to have grabbed it, didn't. And really wanted to grab it afterwards. So, you know, if you guys think you're the only one that missed trades, no. Haven't seen anything yet. All right, so now... Look Look what a nice trade it turned out to be. If you'd grabbed it, look at it. Just go and go and go. Well, I haven't found a top yet, have you, Igshan? Go back. Okay. What top? We're still where we marked the high. Sure. You want it here? Like that? No. Okay. Over here? Okay. Done. Would you consider that LME trade to be a 50 50 trades odd? Uh, I think it's probably slightly better than that I think it's better than a random entry because I also have this low down here but I, I'm going to go with John Lee volatility is picking up I was using a 1.5 ATR look at the volatility now would it have worked everybody look at the volatility look at the ATR I was using 1.5 ticks. Now look at the volatility. Could I take this trade at 1.5? No. I can't. How come Big Sean's the only one that's interested in talking? Everybody look at the ATR. If I'm using 1.5 at the moment, take a look at the ATR on the left. Does it make sense? Yeah. It's much more, right? So all of a sudden, volatility speeding up. So, I mean, if I want to go out to three right now, but I don't know that I have, I don't know that this is worth three of my money. Do you understand what I mean? It's not that I won't go out there because this is 377, but all of a sudden it went from 1.2 to 2.6. .2 I'm not sure that I'm willing to play. I feel good about it. I don't feel that good about it. Who makes these pivots at the bottom? John, I would say this particular bottom right here is we've been running down. This is a lack of sellers. We just ran out of sellers. There was one more person willing to buy than there was willing to sell. This one is probably, I mean, we come back down to retest it. This one is probably somebody a little bit smarter than me. It's boom, boom. And if you have, I know you haven't been around for a while, John. Have you heard me talk about Boom Boom? Yeah, Boom Boom is really the last guy, the last mentor that I had. 
The la he put the last piece in the puzzle for me. And that was, yeah, tape reader, no no charts, never charted. And I spent, you know, five or six years working with him but in the early 80s. But um, really the guy that put it all together for me. I was already the big hitter, you know, at Commodities Corporation. But he still gave me a lot. Instead of trading, for example, if I'd taken this trade, instead of trading here, he's trading here. So, a guy like Boom Boom, here. So, they, they're out there. Oh, I was going to give you guys uh, advance notice. Because we remember we traded backwards last time? Isn't that pure talent? I think that is pure talent, Abdu. All right. <clears throat> I have talked to Battle Commander... Joey Powell. And he's going to do, he'll do up to three seminars with us on how to make, plan, practice, and make live decisions. It's purely about decision making. What do you think about that? This guy that spent 19 years he's he was in every single division of black ops in the United States from the NSA to CIA pass it all around so we got to give him a little bit of time he's got a couple other things going on but yeah he's going to make us razor sharp he's, his decision making is just incredible all right, so, <clears throat> boom, boom, yeah, talent, sweet. And I can't teach talent, okay? No, he wasn't in the pits, Gina. Um, in cash for an exchange, it used to be like the pits. You'd have a broker box, and then there'd be, in each hand, you'd have five phones, kind of one in between each finger, and he'd be yelling the prices to you. 45 bid at 50, 45 bid at 50, 50 paid, 50 bid, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 given, 48, 52. See? So, can you make my fingers match my decision? I don't know. So he wasn't queuing off noise in the pit? No, he was queuing off noise in cash for an exchange, which is about, especially at that time, um, I can't even quantify how much bigger cash for an exchange is, but it's the same principle. It's just exactly like standing in the pit and hearing the noise and watching smell, even smelling. I mean, you can just, you can even, you can even feel it on your face if you pay attention. It is like magic. And unfortunately, it, it's another thing that you guys are going to miss. It's going away. It's actually already gone away. So, and you know, buying the, you know, things so you can hear the thing on the, forget it. There's not enough players to even bother to do it anymore so we have to learn to you but you can do the same tape reading here that's what we're trying to teach you to do you can do it because I do it so you can do it all right so <clears throat> we just just go on to the ether now here you go Ixan. we marked it out there and well no look at the go Are we going to see more boom boom tricks? Um, they're parlor tricks for us because I can't teach you to hear and feel what he was hearing and feeling, David. So I'll I'll point them out for you, and you can go ahead and see if you can watch. You if you want to watch ten thousand playbacks and see if you can pick it up. But um, I'll tell you, I spent seven years, and I got I get it sometimes. But it's only a seven seven years, and it's only a sometimes for me. But just understanding what he was looking for, and I, I and I pass on to you what I got from it. Looks like double the range. We can do that. So I'll pass on to you guys what I picked up. But in terms of. Uh, it's not quite a double, but it's close. We'll put it there for a second. It's still going, though. So here's our first pullback. What did he say when he was trading in the moment? He'd say, 
I'm buying. I'm buying Timmy. Um, he was uh, Malaysian, and so he it was, you know, almost pigged in, kind of broken English. But, but I'm buying Timmy, and um, you know, we had a copy uh, uh, so that he could see my screen on his desk, and he would, you know, mostly would shake his head and snort and say, "I don't know why you trade on that." I don't. And then, yeah, when I'd say, okay, so, and I'd draw a line, and then I'd say, okay, I'm, I got my orders in here, and he'd say, hey, you trading too late, right? Al's got it. You trading too late. You know what he'd say to me, Al? Thank you for driving a price to my profits. You trading too late. <laughs> and he's the one that gave me the name of the whale eventually. That is correct. Really? Oh, yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Um, there, be, there came a time when I was overwhelmingly large, even in his market. And then he said, you're not a big fish, you're the whale. So anyway, this is, um, and I didn't draw it the right way, but here, let's draw it, let's draw it the right, right way. Well, let's just dump it. Um, what is the right way to draw this? Okay, so we come straight up. We need one more bar. Oh, there you go. What do you, What is that line? I mean, I'll leave it blue. Line of maximum excursion. Straight up, first curl, right? So we want to know if that means anything. This trade looks pretty sweet now, doesn't it? So you want to know where double the range was. I'll try again. 1415 okay so it does that's about where we slow down but we don't have a we don't have a marker as the top that's where we had our first pullback that's the good news all right so we just keep right on going so, Gene, if you think when you st you're the only one that sees things and then you don't get them, don't believe me, you're not the only one. I, I guarantee you Shane would show you 55 that he's seen and missed as well. So we're still trading. Now we're trading around it, maybe on the back side. And sure enough, it is on the back side. Can you see it now the second time we come through on the back side? Everybody see this? And now we're hitting short all the way. And, you know, I showed this uh, yesterday, didn't I? So you first pull back, come to the back side. And as you come to the back side, if you can't get through, you start to look for weakness. Well, now we've got our weakness. Now, if you're ready to trade, you could trade anywhere in here. Our ATR is still pretty high. Is that action reaction like you showed in even with the Masters? Uh, I don't, Keith, I don't see the action reaction here yet. Would I hunt for a short now? Um, I'd be watching for weakness. So, yeah, I'm, at the moment, I'm on the short side, Ixan. This backside slip would not apply to the time-based chart? Yeah, sure, it would. Um, John, I've done... Um, I I know all the tapes are not available. Um, I do I'll do I'll do some for you. It applies to anything. That's exactly right. Um, I did some natural gas trades in ten minutes and left the evening sessions off to show you that these exact same lines work. It's just that you know they're just real. They're just dragged out. Time really kind of distorts things in this market. This market gets gets strange in time when you say we can trade here is it because price is already on the back side or because that would be the logic place when price loses energy both well it should lose energy because it's on the back side of the maximum excursion line right that's the only thing we have going for us in terms of deciding that maybe the price is turning so our question right now is well, let's just bring it right out in the open
have we going horizontal and one trick is when we bust through we do our first maximum excursion we curl we can extend the line when we get to the back side and can't get above it have we gone horizontal if you think the answer is yes then you should now be thinking about two things what's the downside what's the potential downside look like okay and if you like it relative to the ATR which is you can see the ATR going from 15 over here to 30 to 31 look at the ATR now it's coming down a little bit we're down to 27 so is at this point you're gonna need at least 10 big figures And can you get those? Sure, you can get those pretty fast. 71 to 61. That's nothing, right? And, oh, there you go. Where's the stop? Well, there, there's, the, there's a question for you. So, but can you hunt for one? Yeah. What do you need? You need mature structure, right? Correct? I also want a, what else? I need something else. What else am I looking for? Uh, if I was going to hunt a short here, what would I be looking for? We're way off topic, but let's get it. Well, frequent pain, yeah, I'd like to see some people get shagged out of theirs. I, I want to see some fresh sellers. What else? Lower highs, sure. What else? You're missing the easy one. Those are all the hard things. What's the easy one? Frequency. Do I have any downsloping frequency yet? Now, you might, maybe, when I said that, maybe you, maybe you, maybe you want to draw this. I don't, but maybe you do. Does that work for anybody? I just saw that. I went, oh, well, maybe. I don't know. Kind of forced. We'll see. Let's watch. Now I've got a box. Well, we've got more mature structure. Now notice that we made a lower high. Do we see that? Okay, now, even though we left a lower high, what are the odds here? Where, where are we? We're in a range, probably, and 50-50. Unless you want to do this and believe in this, you could do this. If you want. But, I don't know. I'm, I'm not convinced yet. I don't know about you. I'm not in a hurry. Too skinny. Pull back orderly. Okay. I'm not in a hurry. Well, so much for that median line, right? If you force it, you get what you deserve, right? Now we're right back at the what we think was the top. Pulling back orderly, says John, right? So, are we breaking out? Are we holding? What's going through your mind? Don't know. Buy a bar. That's don't know. Good. Watch. Not sure. Okay. Don't know yet. Good. Maybe about to find out. Sure. Probably still don't know yet, but we'll we'll give it one more bar. Okay. So so much for the thought that this lower high was gonna hold, right? Now let's 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 think about look at the close of strong. Yep. Now let's let's stop and think about this and the ATR is doing what? It's coming down. Um, let's stop and think about this for a second. Um, I, again, I don't want to get too deep into physics, but let's think about this. You know, when a star is actually collapsing, you guys may or may not know this, may or may not know this, a star the size of the Earth, when it runs out of energy, it will actually collapse all the way down to atomic size 
from the size of a planet okay and then as it gets almost to the, its lowest energy state it'll have one last bit of explosion and our star is not big enough to be a supernova it'll just have like a little pulse I'm sorry I wish you guys could see my hands it'll have a little pulse that expands and there'll be like a ghostly ring around it for a few centuries and that's its last emission of energy now you might say what in the hell are you talking about hang on Nick Shun. Do you see how I asked the question here? Is this horizontal? Now, it's a question. We don't know. But often, when things look like they're horizontal, we'll get one last bit of energy to the top. It's a very weak. So we're, we're almost at flat. going down let's go up sorry we're almost at flat but we're not quite there so as we go to flat if I can get it there we go as we make the transition from almost to flat to horizontal there'll be one last it you know emission of light okay just keep, you know, it'll work. Would that be a wash? Could be, yeah. Sure. Don't know that this one is. Let's see how it plays out. Now, Ikshan says, how important is the ATR in your decision to trade? Well, think about it this this way, Ikshan. Down here, where I had the frequency line, we had just gone from 1.5 to 3, and it actually didn't touch the first time. It did touch the second time, but if I hadn't touched on that second, if I hadn't traded on that second bar, there was no opportunity to get in and at that point the ATR had gone from 1.5 to 2.7 and I wasn't willing to put 300 bucks on that trade right there okay so that was important in my at that point it was important now I'm watching it because I want to see as it collapses the ATR as it comes back in that might also help me decide when this move is happening as things slow down okay didn't have liquidity before large bars now it's much more liquid yep remember uh, John Lee if you have a minute smaller the bars in a time based the more liquidity the larger the bars the less liquidity okay everything's compact okay God, I hate to say this. I almost feel like I should be using a webcam so you guys can see my hands. Anyway, so we come up. Well, I'm sorry that this popped up when it did, but it did. So nothing I can do about it. We come up, and you can take a look. We start to show weakness again. And this is when, you know, if we if we remember the star bit, I'll, I'll try and remember to bring a picture Monday of that's of a star emitting its last little bit of its last gasp of energy energy where we go from almost flat to flat this is like that last emission of energy it's like it sends out a a help signal and nobody answers and look what happens now I start to notice these bars. Beep, beep. These bars that are just keep closing on their lows. You with me? And let's just widen out. This is where we should be looking. There's another one. I don't know why I didn't mark it, but there's another one. There's another one. And this is kind of our center line, more than anything. Swap from closing on the highs to closing on the lows. There you go, Ixchan. So I don't see the trade. Maybe there's a trade up here. But I do see and feel the last gasp of energy. 
and right here. So we've got double bottoms here. Right here, I can feel the flow change. It's a little late for a train, a trade, isn't it? Would those down bars earlier in the prior range be beep beep two in the prior range? Uh, yeah, they could be, but I just didn't notice them. And what, the reason I noticed them is because I I was thinking this is this horizontal, and of course then we broke, and look at the closes on here. We leveled off and turned again. Do you see the fulcrum at 837.09 on that bar? 837.09. Hmm. Draw it for me and send it to me, Al. Is it because of more? So in your mind, are you thinking about what Amos says and that it's sell the shoulder? Um, I'm yeah. I'm, actually, I'm always thinking that BJ, um, which is kind of that's kind of anti boom boom, but um, the different styles of traders. But um, I'm always I want to be close to the bone, but I don't want. I'm not trying to pick a top ever. What makes the difference between when you want to see more commitment and when you trade close to the bone? Well, man, I had no chance to trade close to the bone here. You mean confirmation. Um, is it because of more heightened awareness that you started making the beep beep bars? Probably, Ouija. I was already hunting horizontal. Then we busted through. And that's okay. Rather than get upset and go, oh, crap, I'm done. I went, well, okay, let's see if this is the new up leg or if this is just the last gasp before we turn horizontal. And it turned out to be the last gasp before we turned horizontal. But if you've got it in your mind that this is horizontal, damn it, this is horizontal and I'm going to make it horizontal. And so you're selling right here with a stop. Then you can't keep your mind open for this move. So I have no chance. I mean, I do see it here, which is basically, you know, let's take this out. Let's just do this. And, you know, I didn't do this. I wish I had because I probably would have. Might have been able to shoulder my way into this trade but no is the gray line drawn casually it's just casual and i didn't draw it till we got down here ouija i'm just trying to cut through the action because i don't see a median line i don't even see an action reaction line you know the one thing i do see is no you know nobody really liked this slope Let's see what that looks like. Maybe a bit steep, but let's 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 go ahead and extend it and see what see what that looks like. Might be more interesting than what I drew casually. How do you know this is going down instead of a range before going higher? Well, this is one I knew it right here. As I said, this is. You can think of an think of an uh, atom, and it emits a photon, which makes it go down to a lower state. This is the emission of the photon, which makes it goes down to a lower state. Or it's a star that's dying. It emits the last bit of energy, and then it actually turns into what they casually call a brown dwarf. Okay, we're not big enough to be a, a, a nebula when when it's all over. We're just going to be it's just a little popcorn fart, boop, and there's going to be a little ring around our Earth for a couple hundred years or so, and then that'll dissipate into the heavens. And so 
I don't know until this bar, when we crack this prior high and close on the low and start to see more of those. Here's another one. So you just see them all over here. At that point, I think, well, you know, probably missed that one. Okay, that's right. I wasn't married to this. Now I've missed this one. That doesn't mean it's over. What side do you think I'm leaning on at this point? <laughs> the downside. Ixan said, hey, old man, if you draw the gray line more accurately, maybe you can get an entry. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking a license on what he said. He didn't say old man, but um, short because of range extension. Yeah. Um, well, Ixan, I could do, I'm trying to put myself in the mind frame of what I was at the time. If I did the maximum excursion, that's maximum excursion. Let's put that out there. That's actually the maximum excursion. So, is that going to help us in the sense that it's going to give us an entry? Wrong way, peach was. E. Price is moving too fast. Yeah, lots of thinking required in less than five minutes to hypothesize a trade. So, Keith, the answer to that is, as you slow down, lots of things are going on. As you slow down, if the market does this while you're slowing down, Ixan says, my week has been like this. Well, watch, Ixan, I agree. I had I've had several opportunities. The up trade, too slow. This one, eh, couldn't grab it, right? So I'm over two. I see them, but I haven't been able to hit them, right? But if I if I if I take you're in the moment, less data and feeling the price swap. Yeah, I can feel the price swap, but I can't seem to grab the entry. So Gina, let me ask you a question. What happens if I get angry at myself? I'm going to try and force it. Yeah, you're wasting my energy. I'm going to try and force an entry. And a revenge trade. Matthew, Matthew C., revenge trade, right? I'm gonna, Ixan says, lose money, and Matthew C. says, yep, okay, I get it. A gray maximum exchange line from top to bars at the prior high has similar frequency, so when it does become valid to take note of or when to discard. Okay. For me, this thing is just moving too fast. It loses slope too fast, and I never have a BC wide enough to do anything with all I have is the maximum excursion. So I can draw an art. Is it possible to hypothesize this beforehand, and if it happens, you're ready to enter? I did. I did hypothesize it beforehand, Keith, that this was the last gasp. But if I'm trading here, I can trade here, and every once in a while you've seen me trade here. But it's that really. Let, let's just be honest. If I trade here, is that art? Is that repeatable entry? Or is that talent? It's art or talent, right? It's not something... I don't think it's teachable. Exactly right, Yikshan. So I'm not going to spend one minute on it, right? So there's no there's no point because even though I sometimes trade there and maybe right or wrong, there's no point in trying to in, in showing it because then it's just hey hey look what I did. Well, big deal. It, it, you should be saying big deal. Show me what I can what you can teach me to do. Don't show you know I I'm not here for comic books. I'm here because I want to learn 
to do something repeatable. Okay? And I actually try not to do these trades. I try and try to do repeatable trades. That is a great distinction, Gina. I even try and force myself to not, if I even if I feel this trade, not take this trade. I want a repeatable entry. When I was younger, I would force this trade. And I made lots of money doing it, but I also got stopped out a lot. But then I slowed down, and I began to realize it's okay if I miss this trade because I'm on a good hunt now. And I've learned over the years that the good hunt leads to some really nice trades. So I don't have to catch this trade to make money. Even though, you know, at some point I was. Was your size an advantage in pushing the market? Um, well, I haven't traded here, but yeah, sure, sometimes it is. But Ixchan, I still, you know, I still get stopped out. Generally, I think when I get stopped out, it's not another whale. It's just I'm fighting the market. And the size of the market just overwhelms me. He says the, that, that patient part needs practice. Yeah, knowing that the best is yet to come. Yep, okay. So we see it come down. Now look at it pull back. There's our maximum excursion line doing its work, right? More beep beep bars. Oops, sorry, move that, but I don't even remember where that went. But, oh, well, maybe there. I'll pretend it's there. We filled the mountain. Okay, thank you. But what does it mean? Anybody want to grab along here? No? Okay. Where's the stop? There you go. That's what I'd tell the fifth grader. This is, this is the last week of fifth grader trading. You know what? It's the girls. I don't know what it is. It's the girls that are just ripping. Last three years, it's been the girls that are just ripping up these guys. I've got a young lady this year. The The girl that I disqualified last year was up 54 point some percent. Going into last week, I have a, a young lady, fifth grader, that's up 43 point some percent, and she's still got open positions that are that are working so maybe they go by the book I don't know <laughs> I don't know but I'll tell you what they're pretty good okay so here we go again better than the hedge fund sure that absolutely another beep beep bar we take out this low close on our low double bottom so I put in the advanced multi pivot line Another beep beep bar. Now we've got multiple bottoms here. And we really have up here, we have our maximum excursion line. It's basically a range if you think about it. This is a range with a two dimensional bottom with Y on the bottom and with Z on top. And the volatility is picking up a little more. Yeah. Now we're at two. Yeah. A little bit. So we've got a two-dimensional bottom and a three-dimensional top. But it's still a range, right? Break to the upside, break to the downside. What do you think? Oh, I got somebody downside, upside. Uh, now I've got the right answer. Don't know. That's the right answer. I don't know. Right? You fell right into the trap, didn't you? 50-50. I don't know. <coughs> I've got multiple bottoms, but I've also got a 3D top, so... I'm not ready to trade yet because now I'm at 50-50. When do I want to trade? Do I want to trade when I'm at 50-50 or when I'm at 72% or 80%?
Yeah. Let's take the higher percentages and something repeatable. This is not repeatable. 50-50 is not repeatable. Okay. So, okay, we do break to the downside. And at this point, at this point, the train has left the station. I go, ah, shit. Gina, you feel that way sometimes? And I know Ixan's whole week has been like that, right? It's like, ah, oh, man. I had this one, too. But I, it's like smoke. I can't get my hands around it. Okay, I see it. I feel it. Keith says I say that a lot. Okay, the important thing is, though, hang on a second. <coughs> the important thing is, yes, the train's left, but I haven't lost any money yet trying to chase things, have I? I haven't forced a trade. I haven't played when the odds were skinny. My powder's dry. That's right. Okay? And I haven't spent any time revenge trading or being angry. I'm just making observations. At this point, I say, look at my moves away from the maximum excursion line. I think that pretty well says that at least for the moment, the train's left the station. I'm not ready to put an order in right here. So I'll have to observe. That's all. But that's okay. I haven't lost any money. And the amazing thing is, take a look at this. We're talking about 25 minutes. I often physically sit on my hands to remind myself to wait. Oh, Igshan, I like that. There's a great meme for you guys. If you don't see the entry and there's a lot of activity going on, sit on your hands. I like that, Igshan. I'm going to steal that. It's at this point that maintaining focus is required. Or get up and leave, Keith. Yeah, I, you're either maintain focus and be neutral or get up and leave. Because otherwise, you are going to lose money. And for every dollar you, le you lose, you got to make it back, right? So we don't want to lose money. We want to just relax and see if we can find something that looks like an entry. So... It's okay. Don't don't let it eat you up. It's okay. I'll tell you what, that frequency that I copied from before, that was just a throwaway, pretty nice, huh? Now this is our maximum excursion from all the way at the bottom. Remember we had 2D and 3D? Here it is all the way down here. And here's our throwaway frequency from over to the left. So now we want to know what's going on. So we've got a beep, beep, lower, close on our low, close on our low, hit our maximum excursion line and our frequency line from before, close on our high. Anybody want to get long? What do you need? Yep, structure, what else? Stop. Yep. What else? Okay. What else? Frequency. I got none of those things. Well, I should say I might have this. I don't have any sign of buyers, do I? Of, of new buyers. So, I, you know, one bar doesn't make me jump off the page. But if I was patient enough to sit through this thinking short, this is not going to make me think. It may make me think we're going to have a pullback, but it isn't going to make me think I better get long. So I'm not impulse trading here. When I say new new buyers, what am I thinking? Um, I want to take out, I want to build some structure and take it out to the upside. Because I've got a pretty strong downtrend going here. So I want to show Buyers, pull back, take it out. You still have the beep, beep, buyers going down. That's right, Ouija. So, I know some of you guys are in mentoring with me, okay? And I know that you're suffering from the, I got to get long when it moves up 
let me just impulse trade, right? I'm not going to out you, but you know you're here, right? Nobody else can see your comment. Go ahead. It's good for you. Clean your soul. So the impulse trading is not going to get you anywhere. Wait for the market to set up for you. Just wait for the market. So let's see what happens. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Okay. Yep. Okay, now we've got three bars that close on our highs. I have people. Uh, Gina, I'm going to out you. Gina? When we first met, you were buying right here, weren't you? Absolutely true. But you're not anymore, are you? Slowing down. Yep. Nope. Big Sean says, I'm thinking maybe a swap. Okay. Thinking a swap is not the same as trading. So, but Gina would actually impulse. Okay. Looks like it's turned. Let me get, let me get me some. Okay. And she's not the only one here. I tend to buy the test of the low. Is that wrong? Okay. Matthew C says guilty. Okay. Um, why would you buy the test of the low, Manuel? Because of the line. You got a line, that's it? Let me quote Amos. Don't lose your position because of a fluctuation. Price fluctuates. This is just a fluctuate. Does take, man, we'll take a look at it. Is this any different really than this or this? Memo? The only, th yeah, not really. The only thing different is you have a line right here. At the moment, now it might turn into something more, Manuel, but at the moment, it's still a cascade lower. Yeah, I know it's got high closes, but it's still a cascade lower. So, and we talked about this yesterday in IB. I'm not ready to trade yet because I don't know if this is, maybe this is just another pullback. It's a pretty pullback. And it may just be profit taking, yeah. So let's see what we got out of it. We'll get another bar. It looks even more interesting, but it still looks like it could be a pullback. Maybe something's changed, yeah. But we need to know something's changed. Sometimes you show that type of entry maybe on other time frames. Okay, well, sometimes I'm wrong, Manuel. I try to be consistent. If you want to show me where I've done this, I'll be the first one to say maybe that's talent and not teachable. And I try I try not to teach that, but let's let's see. I'm trying to teach talent today or, or patience today okay now that bar prints manuel well day only charts ta daily charts are different manuel there are very few pivots okay completely different often there we only get one chance to trade so the principles still work it's just that we don't often get the test retest. We often don't get these types of pullbacks. They're just caught up in a intraday chart. All right, so take a look. As this bar prints, Manuel, how do you feel about it right now? Do you feel different? You feel different, right? Well, it, it's there's no reason to be not good because you don't have a trade on yet. But okay, we've had some nice pullbacks. But now this bar prints, and you should be saying, well, that's a pullback maybe. Let's see what the next bar gives me. Traders using moving averages would be selling this now, would they? Actually, I'd be willing to bet, Shane, that the moving averages lag so much that they'd be getting long about over here. That's my bet. 
Looking for a test retest, I think, Sean. Okay, let's see what we get. Okay, so now we don't know. It's starting to widen out, right? So Manuel, starting to like this now? It's okay, just be honest. Is it horror? There you go. Uh, lost already, but Al saying maybe it's horizontal. So, man, well, maybe you're trying to grab some at horizontal, okay? Three bar coil. Don't know what that means, but okay. This looks like a potential BC to me. First BC that we've seen all the way down, isn't it? See that? But we'll see. We'll see what it turns out. Pull back. Beep, beep, bars are back. You with me, Manuel? Look, everybody wants to catch, let's be honest, and then we'll see what, a, what Amos said. Everybody wants to catch the bottom. They want to catch the change, don't they? Don't you all want to find the bottom? Don't you want to be the one that finds the bottom, gets long at the bottom, gets out at the top? Isn't that, isn't that the truth? Let's be honest. I, we don't tell anybody else. Okay, so Shane and John Lee. John Lee, early on. Thank you, John. John, John Lee says, not me. I just want to make money. Well, good for you. Shane, Spur Shane Spurway says, used to. Now I like the middle chunk. Good. But wouldn't it be nice, says Paul. I agree. Okay? I absolutely agree. As you know, the Greeks used to have an absolute, an absolute beauty, an absolute whatever. Everything had an absolute that's the absolute, buying the bottom and selling the top. But don't waste your time. We've talked about it. I can make you a pretty chartist. That's what that would be. Or I can teach you how to make money. Does anybody want to just be a perfect chartist? Now, that's a great comment. Matt Cube says, until I learned more real possibilities, I thought I was screwing up by not catching the tops and bottoms. Yeah, we just want to make money. And our and the money to be made is really in the middle. Thomas said, I used to always think that that's what we were supposed to try and do. Right, we're not. Because it's not repeatable. Of course you want to, but I know that doesn't work consistently over time. Exactly. All right, so we get a nice pullback, and I measure it. Okay? You with me? I don't know that we even get to the trade. I don't care. Because we, we brought out some good feelings and pointed out some interesting things. So here's our nice pullback. Now our beep beep bars show up. So Manuel, you still like buying at this upsloping line? Here's the 3D, here's the 2D. What I thought was middle usually ends up being extremes. Interesting. Okay, so Manuel says he's gonna put an order in. Okay. I got you, buddy. And Manuel wants to go long. Thank you for being honest. And we're going to go, uh, I'll give you 2.2. All right. 5.225.0. Something like that. We'll just make it that right or wrong. There's your stop. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it's a cash stop, but that's fine. I'm willing to let him trade. It, 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 it does have this in it. It's the first real pullback in this entire thing. So maybe that gives this low some significance. Is this a swing low? 
Well, we could spend another 15 minutes debating that. I don't think it's worth worth the time. I'm going to let him use this as a stop, okay? You with me, Keith? All right, man. Well, your order's in the market. Let's see what happens. You're filled. Okay. We've taken out the 3D. We're on the 2D. Big Sean says ugly close. Yes, sir. Another beep beep bar. Okay. You're back in the profit. Nice. A lot of activity in a little bar, but you're still in the profit. Hey, looks really nice now. Nice catch, Manuel. So, let's take a look at it. 5.52 at the top. Pretty nice. 400 bucks. It is not over yet, says Manuel. Okay, sir. Uh, you are correct. It's not over. But now it's over. Beep, beep, bar. Took you out. Now, stay with me, man, well, because I'm going to use you again, okay? Because something funny is going on here. Okay? You with me? And again, we may not get to the trade. I'll go to 9 o'clock today. I don't really care. So, when you have to leave, just leave. It's okay. It'll be on the recording. So, let's watch. Another beep, beep bar. Now, I've got a line, man, well, I've got this frequency line, which was kind of a throwaway line. It's working pretty darn well, isn't it? And I connect this low, this high bar that closed on its high and this bar that closed on its low. Because, no follow through. I should have this, but I don't. Let's see if I can grab it. Nope, wrong one. I don't know what, what the heck. One more time. It's the bar he could not catch. All right, there we go. Build, swing, stop for a short, for a short trade. Okay. You tell me when you want to get short, John. Now I see something. My eyes see something. Does anybody see anything? Don't force it, but if you do, let me know. John's got a good eye going, by the way. Is a box forming. Ah, nice. Transfer the maximum screen over. Are we building a, a 3D box? Very good, Scotty. A slanted box. Media line set, and now it's center line. Hmm. Regaining the line. Closes are in the upper part of the bars. This is what Scotty's asking. See if you guys see this. Wrong way, Peach Foss. Can, can you imagine that? Or is that just crazy? John Lee, is that what you were thinking of? So John says, and John's pretty new. This is like second week or so. Slope box. Looking for a pullback. Wants to find frequency to sell against. So I'm going to take this out. But John, if we get up here, I'll let you enter, okay? So here we go. Beep, beep, bar. So I put in my measurement. This is the same width as this. Okay? Ah, oh, we are at the back side of this excursion line. Nice pickup. Very good, Matt Cubed. Okay, I'm at the same length. John Lee, you want to get short an hour later? 
there enough information for you? Okay, John says, I'm not willing to get short yet. Okay. Let's take a look. Pardon me chewing. There's my cube. Aha. Good eye, Scotty. And we are on the back side of the maximum excursion line and pushing and pushing and pushing. John Lee, got it. Where are you at now? Are you, are you going, hmm? I wonder if I missed it. What are you thinking? I think I missed it. Okay. Manuel, are you going to buy a test of this low? Sidelines. <laughs> You're a smart man. Okay, Matt Cube, he likes a separation. Matt, you get an order in to sell here. Let's see, 553.8, 556. Well, it's mighty big. Three handles. All right, you want to, you want to miss three handles? I'll I'll put an order in for you. Okay. All right. <coughs> but I'm with John Lee. Beep. Still willing to sell, Matt? Depends on the bars. <clears throat> well, you've got an order in the market. I want to know. Do you want your order in the market? Or do you want your order pulled? That's what I want to know. Okay. Double bottoms. We've broke the low. Does the 3D box also have an element of maximum excursion line below reflected at a maximum excursion line at the top? Hooey boy. Element of the maximum excursion line below reflected as a maximum excursion line at the top. I'll have to think about that one. The magenta lines? Are you saying that this is maximum excursion? Is that what you're asking me, Ouija? Um, no, all I did was I just measured the length. That's all I did. Then I dragged it down here to just copy the length out. I was just trying to build a three-dimensional cube. That's all I was trying to do. Now, maybe you just discovered something that I did that I didn't know I was doing, but Scotty was right. I was just going, I wonder if this is a three-dimensional cube. Okay? Now, as we break these lows, can anybody guess what I'm wondering? At the moment, I don't see the trade. So what else might I be thinking? Nobody? Is the floor of the cube slanted? Okay. But we've already taken out the, that. That is this a wash? Is this the bottom? Okay, that's fine. How far down is left? Okay. All good questions. All right, so we're going to find out whether or not the bottom is slanted and whether or not we take it out. And is this the bottom and whether or not this is a wash? Maybe maybe it is a 3D bottom. And maybe it isn't. When this bar prints, I don't think the bottom's in. What do you think? I was waiting, and when this bar prints, I was thinking, well, maybe we're going to see I measure this length now and just copy it. Now, press is a midday thing, John. I don't, we don't talk about that here. Um, 
I copy this low and just to get the measurement and now I add it in here and I want to know does this replicate make sense Shane saying one drive two drives three drives maybe buyers have been taken out absolutely yeah Gina's got it do I mean the box of the same size I exactly was wondering that if I just replicated the box how would it work Keith's got it do I mean the 3d box replicates that's exactly what I was wondering okay I'm not imposing it it's just a measurement is measurement something you use a lot ah uh, Manuel I'm in a po I'm in a position now where the market has left and I don't have a trade okay so what am I doing at the moment? You know? It's a simple thing. Think of Uda. I'm observing. This w if the box recreates Dig Sean, you've got it exactly. It would be two times the range in 3D sloped. You've got it exactly right. Yes. Exactly. So I'm just, you know, I, I've, I've missed. If there was a trade, I've missed it. So now I'm observing until the light goes on and I start. I'm observing because I don't. I'm not in tune. Okay. I mean, I am seeing the bo the 3D box and that's nice. But how much money did the 3 3D box make me? None. I'm probably one of the few traders in the world that can see the 3D boxes, but it doesn't make anything. If the 3D box replicates, what does that mean to you from an opportunity perspective? Well, let's see if it re replicates and see if I can pick something out, Keith. So far, I can't pick. I'm, on, I'm being honest with you, Keith. It's been an hour. The train left without me, and although I see the box, I don't see the opportunity. And I'm not going to trade till I see the opportunity. And I know that might be frustrating for you guys because it seems like I'm willing to wait a long time. But <clears throat> I'm unwilling to lose money over something that, you know, when I can't see anything. This kind of observation demands sticking to a market for quite some time, doesn't it? Manuel, it seems like a long time. This is only an hour. This mar the reason I went to 377, normally I trade 89 or 189, is because this market is rocking. This is only an hour long. Oh, for the one hour? Yeah, I'm sitting here. Sure. I'm scratching my head. This is after the breakfast session. I'm uh, having some tea, relaxing, and trying to decide if I'm going to get an opportunity to trade in the, you know, in the, in the New York daytime. So for an hour or so, I'll sit here. Sure. Well, Manuel, I, you know, I would get if I'm spending this much time on this market, even though I don't have a trade going on, that means that my other five markets, my other four markets, there's nothing there. Okay, so I'm observing the one that I'm just casually observing now. One thing about casually observing, Manuel, if you can keep an open mind, you learn things. So I see the 3D box. You know, I'm a little bit like my cat, Jordan, okay? I see something that's interesting. I pick it up. I play with it. Does that make sense? When do you decide you are done? Is it based on your time window for trading? It doesn't cost me anything. That is exactly right. When do I decide if I'm done? Um, if my focus starts to lose, if I start to lose focus, if I run out of time, like, yeah, I can't trade anymore because I have to do the midday or, yeah, sure. Or, you know. I just rearrange my time so I'll have a whole lot more morning time for trading. That's or if I have nothing going on for sleeping, but <clears throat> that's a whole different discussion. Let's see what happens here. It doesn't cost me anything to observe. Look at it run. Finally, we get a little bit of a curl. So I add the line to the top side. See it? Could this thing be replicating? And again, as uh, Igshan said, 
could this be the three-dimensional doubling the range, right? Looks 2D now, okay? Okay, so pretty soon I'm going to have to copy this line down to here, right? Why not now? So here's the length. Here's the length. Now we'll find out if it follows the length on the upside. Okay, I know it doesn't <clears throat> fit like a carpenter's perfect square, but basically the box replicated, didn't it? So I'm looking at repeatable behavior, right? Interesting example of the importance of a refresh and a movement. Yeah. Do I have a trade yet? Can anybody see a trade? I don't see a trade with a stop. But I'm pretty fascinated by the 3D replication, aren't you? So I've got time. I'm going to watch again. Let's watch again. Right down at the maximum excursion line. I'm going to put out the side. I'm going to see if the maximum excursion line holds or if we blow through. Down to it. Look at the beep beep bar. Beep beep bar. Well, it sure looks like it's lengthened this time. See it? Start to pull back. So I add it on the other side. Ah. Gina says, is that the last gasp? Well, that's certainly what I'm asking. Okay, take care, take care, Kareem, and you can watch the tape. That's certainly what I'm thinking. Is that the last gap to the, gasp to the downside? Maybe we are going to go vertical. We'll see, right? It's certainly, if we lengthen out, is that a change in behavior? Maybe. I, that's what I'm thinking, Al. Maybe. Maybe it's just that the... Remember... We're, trade, we're, we're charting in 2D and 3D here. It could just be that we have changed. We've rotated, right? Okay, take care, Ixan. You have a great weekend. It may just be that we've rotated. So I'm a little careful, but I want to see how this box forms. Or if this box forms. So at the bottom here, I mark horizontal 2D and three-dimensional 3D, right? Well, I mark it here. Here's my pullback. Up, down, 3D, 2D. Everybody with me? I don't have my bottom yet, do I? Oh, maybe I do. Okay, there's the width of the bottom. So what's changed? It's lengthened out. Let's find out now if the length of the BC or the bottom part portion has changed. Yes, it has. So it's lengthened out in this direction. Now it's lengthened out in this direction. So <clears throat> can we say this? Let's see if I can pull it all together for you. Has the crystalline structure changed? Have we gone from crystalline where we're in 3D, we were actually replicating to all of a sudden, at least on a three-dimensional basis, it's not holding together any longer. It's starting to expand. Now, does that mean that the down moves over? Not necessarily. So let's see what Jose says may be flowering. Let's see what it gives us. We come up, leave a high that closes on its low, another beep beep bar, right? 
And you can see our three-dimensional structure is kind of ugly and out of form now. So maybe it's rotated and we can't see the structure that's in here on a three-dimensional basis, but that's okay because we still have 2D. And maybe it'll come back. And we say, you know, thank you, 3D. We'll see you in a little while. Okay. I don't see it. So at the moment, here's what I have that's 3D right here. Wide range bar closes on its low. We're boxed in and we've got a maximum excursion line. Test it. Test it. Breakthrough. Testing the bottom. Bottom's gone. So, just for chuckles, it's hard for me to give up on things. I throw in the length right here and just say, is the length meaning anything at all? John, see, I've never, John says, I've never went into this level of observation. Well, it'll clean your soul, John. <coughs> Let me remind you and everybody else. This level of observation and looking at cubes and being interested is not going to be your bread and butter money, is it? So you can do these observations, and I do do these observations, and I, they're homework for me because I like to look at three-dimensional and fourth-dimensional and fifth-dimensional things and see how they relate to the market. And they do help me. That's where maximum excursion came from, for example. But are they going to be the bread and butter for you? No. Do you want to spend all of your practice time on these? No. If you make an observation here and there and note it down, that's fine. But don't spend all your time and energy on this stuff. Instead, we're still looking for an opportunity. You want, you want an opportunity that allows you to make money. So I'm stubborn. I'm marking out this length. And there's, I, I move it to the top. When we get all the way down here, you know, I say, yeah, I've done a lot of work here. I thought we were going horizontal here. And how'd that work for me? Not too good, did it? And all of a sudden, the 3D is back, right? Well, maybe it is. Look at the length. Now it's much longer. We make a low. Now we start to pull back. Nice. Nice pullback. It's, a, it's starting to look like this pullback. I put my measurement in. Now I'm even further skewed away from the channel, if you will. I hate to use that word. It makes I need to wash my mouth out with soap when I say that. But leave a high, close on a low, and turn down. So you can see 2D and 3D are no longer mating, are they? They're just off kilter a little bit. So if we started hunting here, you'd never have seen the box, right? So let's see what we, if we see, we're seeing the change from 3D to 2D. Um, well, we're certainly seeing that, 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 so we're seeing the change from 3D to 2D. We, we've certainly seen a change in behavior. And it's twisting. That's exactly the right word, John Lee. Thank you. It's twisting. And volatility is slightly picking up. Okay. Note now the volatility, you know, yeah, still about the same. Two and a half. All right. Here I thought horizontal. And what happened? We came up here turned hard is that the last gasp 
of energy before we so is it is it this and then we emit one more photon and then we finally go horizontal so admit a photon then go to the least excited state anybody with me And so let's see what it, okay, Ouija, on an atomic level, we're, we have an electron out here, and if we emit a photon, that causes this, but it actually brings us down to the least excited state, down to zero. What about excursion line down from the top pivot? Okay. Are you talking about this? You showed the importance of a pullback to get to horizontal before. Nice to see you coming back to that. Yeah, we we just saw this before. Let's see if it repeats. It seemed hor. Why won't this do this? It seemed horizontal. There we go. Um, and the question is, but then it made new highs. Why is that? It's that last gasp. <clears throat> and note that that Maximum excursion line, of course, is the same slope. Okay, the last gasp is zero. Yeah, so you are thinking it still could be horizontal at this low. See, I thought it was horizontal. Now we get the last gasp. Now maybe this is the low. Remember how we saw it before on the high? Last gasp, and then finally we go to zero. Matt says the frequency is all still downtrend to me. I'm with you, buddy. Haven't broken anything. What if we take out this maximum excursion line? And this prior high. So here's the 3D, here's the 2D. I'm going to be slow to call this. Can buy a test, retest if it breaks. Okay. In 3D, you have taken out the high, says Al. Okay, I'm, give, I'm willing to give Al that. It's just a bit of logic adding up, but it doesn't make it horizontal, says Ouija. Okay, that would mean ta taking previous sellers. All right, let's see what we get. Certainly, the jury's still out. Testing the tops, failing. Now... I even asked it. This is the, again the question: Have we seen horizontal? Was that the last gasp before we actually made the real horizontal? Do you see it? Well, we'll see. That certainly makes this MLB, and no beep beep bars at the moment. Yep. They've disappeared. And if I draw in the box from before, how's that working for me? It's breaking apart. So the tether between 2D and 3D is gone now. We've rotated out of this. Now we're back up. This is our maximum excursion line. Watch this. This is all the way from the low low. Let me do this. This is really your first pullback. It's a really nice pullback, that's for sure. 
and look where we where we look where we get pinned. How about that? Right on the 3D of the lowest low we've seen. Okay. So the 2D, 3D we were looking at here fell apart, but the 3D from the bottom nailed it almost to the tick. Here, I'll squeeze in for you real quick. How about that? So the low we made right right when we went to crazy ticks, that 2D, it's just off this little bit here, when we went into the 3D, gives us a top. So if you're not drawing these maximum excursion lines, BJ, is it safe to say you're leaving money on the table? He says, I live off of them. Okay. Yeah, BJ says, you're, lo you're leaving so much money on the table. That little green MX pin must may also hit the point. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Well, let's put it out there. Just for chuckles. It, like I said, at this point, we're so far away from what I was what I was thinking of talking about. It's a little off, but it's not bad. Um, that I don't really care. What I, what I prefer at this point to do is show you how I observe. Okay, so now we've got multiple bottoms. As we pull back, for me to make this an important pivot, what do I need to do? I need to see what? Fresh sellers. I'll need frequency as well, yes. Yep. So, give me some sellers. Take out the lows. Well, no. Okay. If we pull up and close on our low. We've got our first beep beep bar. Hey, why not? Crazier things have worked, right? These frequency bars, you got to draw them to like them, right, BJ? You're not going to like them on day one. You're not going to like them on day five. You keep drawing them, you'll get better and better and better. Similar, but not the same. I, me I actually measured the slope. Similar, but not the same. It's about 10% off. But the 3D of the maximum excursion held, so why not throw out the 3D from this maximum excursion? Let's see what we get, okay? You ready? When they work, you will ask yourself, why didn't I do it, do it sooner, says BJ. Yep, just like you asked me, why didn't you show it sooner? <laughs> okay. And we have, more, we have more stuff coming, guys. Okay, I'm just, I'm wandering a little bit today. It's Friday. I've had a really, you guys know I have had a really long week. Evening with the master, then beat IB after being absent for three months. I, I was worried about getting back in the swing of things, so. All right, so let's see what we do. We we make our nice little maximum excursion line. Well, that doesn't take long. Break through our lows with a beep beep bar. So that's going to make me. Here's my first median line. Yahoo. Now it seems like it took forever. This is about an hour and forty five minutes. It's not forever. It doesn't. It isn't that often that I get the opportunity to just sit, relax, and observe. So when can we start drawing that kind of frequency lines? You can start drawing them right now, man. Well, why why aren't you? Who's drawing frequency lines? I know BJ is. BJ is making fortune off them. Okay, lots of people are. Matthew C. said I started this week. Okay. Draw them. You can always erase them. Get, take a practice. Feel like I'm guessing. Okay, that's early in the process, Matthew C. I am using, but the question is if they are correct. Manuel, you have to practice. Gina says yes, totally guessing. Practice. 
keep practice. Keith says it's amazing how many work out. It is amazing. I'm not cherry picking. You guys see me draw them and, and they're just, they don't become anything. Like, like this. What did this give me? Really? Not much. Nothing to trade off of, that's for sure. <coughs> I draw them and draw them and draw them and draw them. I'm drawing them, but they, they're getting blown out, so I need to understand when they're appropriate or not. Draw them all the time, Shane. When you see the frequency, draw them. Certainly the maximum excursion lines, you have to draw them. I'm not telling you to trade on everyone, but draw them until you begin to understand how price interacts with them, okay? But draw the frequency lines as well. Now, if you draw them for a while and you just say, you know what, I can't work with them. You know, Dawn, she's not here today, but... Uh, it's, you know, she's sleeping right now. Dawn hates him. She's a media line queen. That's fine. It's okay. You will find where they cross, and you find energy points, and they show you where to trade. I find the area, and then read the bars. There you go. That's straight from BJ. It's like stalking frequency with frequency lines. Yeah. Draw and anticipate box up or box down. Sure. All right, so let's see where this rascal goes. We've got our median line in, and for some people, that's comfort. How many people here feel better when we've got a mathematical median line, which gives us some probabilities? Okay, lots of people. Okay, it's fine. Scotty, you shouldn't st you shouldn't feel like me still. It's okay. These things have mathematical probabilities. The other ones can earn mathematical probability, and I'm certainly willing to use them all the time. BJ certainly is, but that doesn't mean you have to. You can stick with just median lines if you want. I Personally, I'd still be drawing the max excursion lines. I, I would draw them even if I was just a median line trader. You might find that as price degrades this fast, if you pay attention, this may be the line you're going to be using. But we'll see. I just keep drawing them. Now, notice that I found the multi-pivot line in here. This high, this high, this close, this high. I could even go further, but... And I've extended it forward. And is that the moment of balance? Because <clears throat> here's the question. Did we go horizontal here? What do you think? Sure. But what's going on now? When we get up here, have we gone to horizontal again? It's the prior high. Phase back into forward move or new down move? Yeah. Sometimes there are so many lines that we can use that I feel lost. Well, Manuel, the more you draw, the, the easier it'll be for you to look through the lines. If you need to, clean up your chart. And maybe this chart is too cluttered for you, but for a lot of people here, it's not. So, again, we should be asking the question, now is this horizontal? Frequency lines help you find the right median line. You might be drawing from the wrong point, and frequency lines will help. I like that, BJ. So when I put this one out right here, I didn't have C yet, but clearly this is a strong frequency line, and it holds. Price even accelerates as after I draw it, which helps me decide, okay, I think that's an important area. Okay, so let's see what we get. We've got double bottoms now. We're right ahead of the balance line. I want to see sellers. Well, how about that? Beep, beep, bars are back again. I think maybe the, the low is not the horizontal. Well, no, Ouija, you can go horizontal and then come back up and go horizontal. There are, there are horizontals inside of horizontals, in other words, right? Catch me, Ouija? They're like small balls, yeah. Right. Oh, gears inside of bigger gears, right? 
Okay. Um, let's see if I got everybody. Okay. So now we broke the balance line. And it holds to the downside. So this looks like an important set of tops, and they're really horizontal. Now here's our low. We're at the median line. Okay. What's the... Let's do it right now. What's the probability? We're at the median line. What's the probability now? Yeah, this thing is steep at the moment. What's But what's the probability? It's not 50-50. You're close. It's 43.43, right? So, just to remind everybody, because somebody in, in mentoring said to me, you know what? I wish you'd said that before. So, apparently, I have been forgetting to remind everybody. And you'll see later on. I just elucidate. It's 43% reverse, 43% zoom, okay? We're at the median line. So let's see what the median line gives us. It's also the prior low, right? So as you're thinking about trading and you go, somebody just said, wow, that's steep. Who was that? Mad cubed. Okay. So as this bar prints, Gina, are you with me? Or even here. And we pull past through these bars. You feel that tug to get short, don't you? But, well, now you say it's too late. How about six months ago? I want honest answer. She's laughing, but you know the answer, right? Gina says six months ago, it was never too late to lose money. How about that? I like that statement. Do you see how much your behavior has changed? Yeah, that's a great that's a great comment. Matt says it's a great comment. Okay, so now Gina gets it. This is not the time to trade. This is the time to say, okay, we've gone from 80% probability of making the median line. We've made the median line. Now we're at 43%. Uh, do I want to trade at 80% or 43%? John Lee, you'll be much better in six months. Just be patient. Of course, we want to trade at 80%, right? So right now, I'm on the sidelines. That's okay. But I have a median line. I have hope, right? You with me? Let's see what happens at the median line. It zooms it. Would a maximum exclusion line from AC be worthwhile to dry? They're always worth, worthwhile to draw. From A to A to C. It's an upsloper, though. Right? If we start heading up, I'll draw it. But Oh, an anchor at B. Okay. Well, that's different. So you want to reflect this. I'll do it for you. Just because you're you. There's, there's the shade color. already broken we're at the mountain right so and we're do and notice the beep beep bars are back as well and the beep beep bars are back but we're still flirting with the bottom okay now we're moving through this is the prior major low this was the maximum this is the 3d this is the 2d prior major low i guess i can't change it now i'd grab it if i could but we've just made new lows for the entire move so we've got what what is this called yes the path of resist, least resistance is down but what is what are we doing right now 
Yes, but come on. Not just cascading. What are we doing? Yes, we are finding a low. What? Accelerating. What else? Come on. Yes, it is an 80% chance for a low median line. Yes, it is. Price discovery. Come on. There's an easy word for this. We need this. Uh, we are. We've zoomed and retested. But what? Come on. Range extension. Thank you, Ouija. This is good for us, right? We want to extend the range because if if we're thinking about being short, right? I'm still thinking about getting short. I know I don't have the trade yet. I'm, I'm dumping this, by the way, Shane. I know I don't have the trade yet, but if I get range extension, then when the pendulum pullback comes, I have more room, right? Does that make sense? We're making, we're widening out the space. We're flowering, okay? All right, so let's see what we get. Come down, we do break the lows. Now, let's look closely at this one. Al, I'm not so sure about this one. I marked it before, but I'm not so sure. We'll take a look at this one. You ready, Al? I don't remember this is the first one, but that kind of thinking can improve patience. Exactly, Ouija. This is, by wading through this, you're actually helping yourself because it's range extension. It's setting yourself up for a better trade. Are you watching now? Oh, Al made a left. It's 8 o'clock, past 8 o'clock. All right, so, <clears throat> Al, when you watch the recording, when you're this far down in the down move, you need that kind of extension to get a valid pivot. You got it, buddy, because I don't want to trade down here, do I? I want price to pull back somewhere and give me a nice entry that's got to stop and still hasn't broken the downward momentum. It's just a pendulum pullback. Make sense? <clears throat> so let's watch this kind of goofy line. In the back of my mind, I think this might be the first time we showed this, but maybe not. So I get a close on the high, then I get a close on the low. Then I get a close on the high, but note that the, I can connect the three tops and they're lower. It's just an observation. And this is my maximum extrusion line off of these three bars. Do you see it? Okay. Now I get another higher close. This one's higher. Do you see that? So I think, at this point, I think I've broken the pattern. You with me? And we are on the other side of the median line. Yes, indeed, we are. And then I get crap. I get I pull right back down to the excursion line. And I think, well, that isn't what I thought. And it's a beep beep bar as well. Do you see that? That is the same as this. So now I'm scratching my head. Okay, now I got the same as this. Do you see that? <clears throat> now I wonder, do you see the red line here? Let me make it black. I wonder if this is the teeter-totter. <clears throat> and we're pulling back. Is this going to be the fulcrum? And we're pulling back and about to turn lower. It's just an observation. I don't know how it's going to play out, but it's an observation, okay? So let's see what we get. Note I marked this bar, which is the pullback above the red median line, okay? And beep, beep bar, and we're right back below it. So I think this was the fulcrum, and now we've just tipped. Do you see that? More weight got on this side, and it pushed it right back down the arrows. See?
and now we're below the red down sloping median line so let's see and we're down and running another beep beep bar another beep beep bar but we retest from the back side and now I say okay well you know what let me refresh the frequency in here because we've come a long way to this red line without using it and maybe I could build a smaller one as Igshan was talking about he'll see this on the replay are you marking the higher closes with yellow circles because they are beep beep bars to the upside no no Weechi I was just noting that they're closing on the highs but then the next one is lower then they're closing on the high and then the next one is lower that's the only reason I marked them I just found that interesting they are in the pullback but it's like okay that's higher wait the next close higher is up is not up it's actually lower and that happened to me twice so I thought maybe things were changing hands but instead I think this was the fulcrum and now the market's got the weight on the fulcrum and the seesaws turned so this movement down here makes me mark this alternating pivot as ML1 I'm gonna try and refresh the frequency and draw a smaller median line everybody with me why would I do that anybody know what I'm thinking yeah we just got it Weejay says because I want to get an entry right so let's see if I can find frequency that will allow me to find an entry and thank you for staying by the way so look as we accelerate you can see some people tried to maybe get a little bit long here pick a little bit of a bottom And they're getting washed out, right? Might be the gasp. Yep. They're running the stops. Running the stops. All right. We leave a low. 3D. I don't know if I have a 2D. But maybe the book is clear now, at least to the downside. Everybody is what right here? short or they've taken a punch right they're short or they're beat up and flat <clears throat> I can't imagine people are long can you so what generally happens when everybody's short anybody yeah no more sellers but price reverses to the upside right no further selling and what are we going to get that I want market goes up what am I looking for I've already told you pendulum pullback right <coughs> panic buyers but because we had this range extension that might have gotten you all bored you need to learn patience because this range extension means that this pendulum pullback can happen and put me in a place to get short and still not have broken the downtrend follow me I got plenty of room now is that undershoot important uh, let's watch that's a good that, you know what's a good question just for good order's sake I'll put it up here just to remind us how about that okay all right so let's go and you can see the March here's our maximum excursion line for the top hasn't even been touched before first touch second touch third touch gone zoom through the maximum excursion line zoom through the median line that makes me mark this ML2 I'm now wetting my chops thinking all right good now I'm gonna get the pullback that I want can you see that how many of you were at IB yesterday and heard me say I, I'm six trades ahead of the market. I'm six moves ahead of the market as we're coming down here I'm thinking we're gonna find a bottom go horizontal and pull back 
that's going to give me an entry. In down moves like this, once price gets to an area for a short, I wind up second guessing. My thoughts are, it's gone down so much, it's going to go up now. Well, watch Maseo as I, we've had range extension and I was patient. Now that I have range extension, I can wait for the sweet spot as it moves back up. I'm sorry, I'm doing this with my hands, but think of the, you know, it's like a giant seesaw. It's now suddenly moving to the upside. But I know that this is probably... It zoomed the median line. I'm probably where am I probably going to go? If I zoom the median line, where am I going? Andrews tells you upper parallel, right? Or something like it, right? I'm going in that direction. The next most likely line is exactly the right. That's exactly the right language. All right, so we retest after the zoom. fluttering around the median line but stay above it wide range bar higher wide wide range bar higher another wide range bar higher and start to turn lower as we turn lower I mark this maximum excursion I don't think I can grab it oh there we go see the maximum excursion Okay, now, this line is also something else. What is it? No. Your, your eyes should light up. Come on. AC of a modified shift. Ouija, ding, 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 ding. Yep, Paul's got it. Todd's got it. See it? It's the AC line of a modified shift. So do I want this to be a traditional median line, or do I want this to be a modified shift as I draw it? Modified shift, right? So that that says to me, well, median line three. Sorry, I just want to copy it. So that makes me immediately say, well, I guess. So here, was that important? Yeah, it was. Undershoot, undershoot. Okay, we're trading inside the big red ones, Matt. So good, good observation. So now I've got my modified shift. That's not it. Let me see if I can grab it down here. I've got so many lines again that we're... There we go. 50. And I don't, need, I don't even need 100 because it's brown, right? Okay, watch. I'll make it a median line. But why would I, since I've got the maximum skirt... I can... But I've got the maximum, I, I mean, I can because I've got this line out here, but I expect that price is going to respect this maximum excursion line, not this upper parallel. Okay, Gina, take care. I can leave it up there. I'll leave it up there for you, Shane, and then I'll change it when I want to. Now watch. <clears throat> I've got ML3. What do I need now? You should also always be thinking ahead. Pull back, pull back, pull back. Are you going to give me an entry? Well, that looks like a pullback, doesn't it? That looks like a pullback, doesn't it? Now, Shane, this has no separation, right? So we're going to pass on this bar if we're looking at the traditional upper upper parallel. Okay, that's got separation. If you want, you can go short there. Let's see what we get. That's got separation. So maybe you like that short. I'll uh, I'm going to put you in here, Shane. This had separation. I'm going to put Shane short right here. Swinging up, I don't know what size stop you had, Shane, but hopefully it's large enough. Now we're testing the, this is the maximum excursion line, and it's also 
the upper parallel of this shifted. Shift. Shift. Not shifted. Right? Let's see what we get. We close with great separation. Now, Shane's already going to be in. Okay, let, let's take a look and see how much heat you took, buddy. Uh, 525, 527. Oh. Two and a half, yeah. Okay. You need to be, you actually need to be all the way up here. 525. You need a three, three. Okay. Stop up of ML3. Okay. Three. All right. So Shane's use, risking three. So he's in at 520. Let's call it 527 to make it easy. So he needs 517. You need a retest of the median line. At, at minimum, okay? You're going to see my 4 bar rule right now. BJ, as a matter of fact. Ready? So here's, for me, here's my test. Here's my separation. Here's my first bar after my test. Shane's already in. If he can afford the three, I think it's three handle stop, that's fine. So here I am saying, okay, there's my test, and I got to trade within four, within four bars. Otherwise, it gets stale, right? Is that what you're asking about, BBJ? Masao says, this is why Hagopian is overused. It seems to me Hagopian is best used in causes like this when the market has made a lengthy move in one direction and I'm waiting for a pullback. Um, that's why I refreshed the frequency, though. Now, I think it was Matt that asked about overshoot. How about this, Matt? If you use the modified shift, it's starting to look pretty good now, isn't it? All right, so here's the first bar after the test, BJ. Now watch. Shane's in. I'm not because I'm trading off the modified shift or the maximum excursion line. There's the second bar. There's the third bar. There's the fourth bar. Now it does test the green again. Shane, you're doing good. And I've got an order to sell after we get this separation bar. But now we're at four. And we zoom and it's the fifth bar. We cancel the sell. You get it, BJ? Stale. There. I need another test. Right? So let's see what we get. Come down and test them. If you're taking your profit at the red median line, here you go, Big Bob. Let's see how you did, Shane. You risked 289 bucks, 229 bucks, sorry, to make 874. That works for me. It's three ish. What do you think, Shane? Are you taking your money? You fell asleep on me. Okay, so we're down at the median line. Works for me. Hold on now for the green lower median line. Oh, okay. So he wants the green lower median line. Okay, let's see what we get. You are entering and exiting at different median lines. Um, I'm not doing anything yet, John. I'm, I'm, I'm stalking. He entered here. I'm just looking. It has to be the fifth bar. What if it's the fourth bar touch? No, 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 no. At five bars, I throw it away, Jose. It's stale. Test. Okay, take care, Bob. Test. If it, if it doesn't get back up here within five bars, I'm just gone. Take care, Paul. You can watch the replay. We're, you know, we're just going to putter around for another, another 10 minutes or so. So we're at the median line. Shane wants the green median line because he entered on green. Let's see what we get. Andrews 101 forced pivot at the median line, right? Remember, we're at 43% and 43% here, guys.
So we've gone from 80% to 43%. Unless you have a real reason, it's not a bad time to take your profit at the median line, right? Let's see what happens to Shane. Shane was holding out for this. We're retesting the green. That's good. Nice separation. And blown through. Oops. Now, Shane, you're already back at a loss. And I don't know if you would have put in anything here and gotten stopped out. That's up to you. But let's count, let's take a look at this because we're running low on time. We're up at the red median line. Now that we've blown through the green and we are testing the maximum excursion line, you have a you have a question. Is the red in charge or is the maximum excursion line in charge? Matt says maximum excursion. Anybody else? Modified shift. Max. Both. Both, Petra. I like that. Any stop I'm going to put on this is going to cover both, isn't it? Right? This is the pullback I'm waiting for. I could be wrong and it could blow through, but if I'm looking for at the energy point, okay, if I'm looking for a pullback, this is it. So let's see what am I willing to do. I need separation. Okay, I get my separation. One bar, BJ, see it? Test, one bar. Now my orders are in. Where am I willing to sell? I do not want to miss this one. How, how long have I been watching this? Okay, so now I'm at almost two, two hours and a half, two hours and a half hours, something like that, maybe three hours. I don't think I'm going to get another opportunity. Don't you get your separation on that first bar? Uh, I want to see more. At this first bar, I'm actually, maybe I get enough, but not from the red. And I'm wondering if the red's in charge, so I want to see separation from the red as well. Okay? Sell on the red since the stop is the same. Okay? I'm actually, that's a great, Keith, that's fine, but here's what I'm thinking. I've, I've been grabbing in a lot of smoke for the last three hours. I want to get in. Yeah, I do, I do feel a little impulsive. But here's the difference, Jose. Here's the stop. See it? See the size of the stop, Jose? Do you see it? Okay, now watch. I can get in here. I can get in here. I can use the stop and I'm still even if I go all the way down here, I'm still more than I'm about five pips below. I mean five pips above the C point. So I could be here, here, or down here, which are these this close, this open and make sure I get short. Follow me? It's the same trade. Instead of impulsive, I'd say aggressive. How about that? Would you, would you give me that, Jose? After this amount of stalking, I think I'm in turn enough for the market to say, I think this is the last gas. If I don't take this trade, I'm not going to be taking a trade. I'm going to be going to go have lunch with my wife, right? All right, so let's see what happens real quick. I don't want to keep you guys too long. Next bar, BJ. Bar two orders are filled. So it didn't, it didn't get a chance to get stale. But I'm counting these bars every single time. And on the fifth bar, I just I pitch it. New idea. See what I mean? 
Freshen it right back up. Doesn't mean I'm going to give up, but I'm going to freshen it right back up. So on this one, one, two, three, four, crap. Cancel the cell. Wait. Pendulum pull back right back on the same lines. One, two, let me in. All right. Next bar, I like you. Nice separation. If I'd waited, if I'd not been aggressive, I wouldn't have been able to sell at the red. I wouldn't have been able to sell at the maximum excursion line. So this idea, not that I hadn't used it before, but here's the actual mathematical justification. We got it from Carlos, our DVD guy. If you're going to use the, if you got this much stop to use, figure out how much you can use. You can, you can sell anywhere in there. It's the same trade. Trade within your stop, right? I can't tell you how much money this has made for people. It's such an easy slogan. It'll let you remember. You don't have to be on the line. If you're going to use that stop, you can trade anywhere in there. Same trade. All right, so let's go on. Okay, take care, Manuel. You watch the DVD. We're just about done. Nice separation. You guys should definitely be at break even. It's a lot of money now. 600 bucks a contract. Right? What do you think my profit target is? The key was test and separation. Absolutely. What do you think my profit target is? Red median line, says Matt. Anybody else? Red to red. Okay. Anybody else? Mountain base. Interesting. Okay. Anybody else? The low, which is the mountain base. Yep. Okay, that about covers them all. Let's see what we get. The maroon line off of a low. Hmm, okay. Red median line is new lows, so the box in stops. Okay, let's see what we get. You guys need to be a break even. Here's a pullback. And triple tops. Does it hold? Here's our bottom being tested. Bottom doesn't hold. Yahoo. New bottom. We haven't found a top. Now we're coming back up. Up. Oh, closes on its low. Let's see if it gets tested. No. And broken through. And price is, time is working for us because, well, space, because this is down sloping, right? Longer it takes, more money we're going to make. Price turns, double bottom. I don't know why this says Andrews 101. We must be missing a meeting line or something. Anyway, interesting. Let me put this here because it's distracting. The modified, sh oh, that's right. That's right. Sorry. Thank you. Shane, I'm sorry, we're busting your line. There we are. You're right. So now we're at the median line of the modified shift. But which line is in control? That's what you have to decide. Which line's in control? Is it the green or is it the red? You have to decide that for yourself. Price turns. Now we zoom the green median line, modified shift. Is it a wash? Doesn't look like it, does it? Boxed at the moment. There's our, I'll give that as a retest. Andrews 101, zoom, retest. Close on our low. Sprinting now. Make a low, tighter box. As you get closer to your profit target, you're going to use more aggressive boxes. So we're boxing in profit. See it all the way down? 
Still there, guys? I know BJ is, but okay. Another new low, of course, right at the green lower parallel. We pause. Now we break through. If you didn't move your stop then, you have to move it now. And what's right in front of us? 43% of the time we're going to stop and reverse. 43% of the time we're going to zoom and accelerate at this red line. We've been trading 80% probability we're going to get to this red median line. Matt Cube has it. Give me my money. Everybody else get it? Do you see the odds shift? Can you, can you, it's just statistically, can you see the difference? It's not a shift in the trend, but these median lines have mathematics built into them. It has the statistics built in. So we're trading with 80% probability that we're going to get to this red line. But once we get to the red line, we're now at this. And we decided the red was in control, so I'm out. Thank you. Give me my money. I'm, I'm even a couple of pips ahead of the red line. Thank you. Goodbye. Now, if it keeps going, God bless everybody that stayed in. That's fine. It's okay. We're very, very extended. Absolutely. We haven't had much of a pullback, have we? And it's a great amount of money. It does go a bit lower or not. And it turns turns away nicely. So let's look real quick, and then we'll be done. I don't want to keep you longer than 9 o'clock. Thank you for sticking around. Those of you who didn't, you'll be able to catch it on the DVD. And so you saw me miss a few. You saw me take a swipe trying to get short here. Shane did get short here. I was like, ah, crap, here's five bars. I'm out. Never mind. But swung right back down to the red. So I do get short there. I'm just being patient. Wish I could see it, but I'm going to guess it's about there. So we risked 300 to make 20, I don't know, whatever, 20 something. So it's, I don't know, it's 8 to 1 or something like that. But the important part is 80%, we get to 43%, give me my money. Yeah, this is trading the shoulder. This is absolutely trading the shoulder. Yes. Don't try and sell the top. Try and find a pullback that you can sell. That's exactly what Amos would say. Yep. Nice observation, Ouija. Did you guys learn anything today? I feel a little wistful or something. Please check the mail. I'm writing as I would like. Okay. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you, Petra. This concept is bread and butter. Yes, it is. Okay, so this is where I get confused. We were drawing quite steep frequency lines, but in the end, we use the more gentler maximum excursion line. Um, okay. Practice. But Shane, your trade made money, right? You actually never got stopped out. You just got in where I was not willing to get in. Just means you were more aggressive than I was, that's all. Yes, you did get dragged behind the bus, and that's why I didn't like that trade. That's why I want the maximum excursion line, because frankly, let me point this out. Everybody remember somebody yesterday asking me if I could show losses? Like, that, like that's going to help you or something? It's not going to help you. But anyway... Let me, let me show you something real quick. If I get short um, where Shane did here, okay, I'm more likely to get dragged behind the bus because I've got this maximum excursion line. Price is, this is like a magnet to price, okay? And I'm also still crawling around inside of this big red downsloping structure. Okay, so trading here is okay. There was nothing wrong with trading there, Shane. But if I can be patient, I'm more likely to get this sell. Now, I missed it. You can see. 
if I was more aggressive, I might have gotten it. But I'd rather take this than this traditional one. And then I'm going to wait. And then the red reimposes itself. Well, Shane, just draw the... Okay, Shane says, I'm comfortable with the maximum excursion lines, but the frequencies have me a little bit on edge. Okay, Shane, draw them casually. Pay less attention to them. Just... Or, or don't even draw them. But if I were you, I would just draw them casually and just, just draw them and forget them. And see if they work their way into your trading. If they don't and you're still making money, maybe frequency lines aren't for you other than the maximum excursion. Matt Cube says it does show you the mindset that comes with an entry, how it frames the rest of the trade. See here, I'm more likely to get stopped out, I think. Here... I'm willing to trade here. Of course, it didn't happen. But I'm willing to trade here again. But then the red reimposes itself. So that's the key for me for this trade. This, To me, this is the last gasp entry. When the red actually, when we swing far enough back up that we come right back to the red, this is the nexus. We're either going to get in here or we're going to blow through the red and this trade's over and I'm going to get stopped out. See, this, see, see that? And because it's a nexus, I have to get in. I must get in. I'll find my, I'll find a way in, especially because the stop is the same no matter where I use it, right? So I'm going to use all the stop. Okay, hopefully you guys learned something. I appreciate the three hours. I know it was a long time. It was a nice entry. I, I liked it. Um, it's Friday. I hope you guys had a nice week. And... Um, No, I, I'm I'm willing to do it for three hours. I, I, you know, there was no way for me to do it. Like I said, the the beginning of the session didn't go where I wanted it to go, but you learned a lot, so I don't really care. Can I squeeze in? Sure. How's that? You want more? You want more, Scotty? Okay. Everybody have a great weekend. Uh, I'll probably see you at the midday. And um, take care. Thanks for coming.